Hi dear students, today we discuss the next topic in your syllabus that is angular momentum and fixed axis rotation. Uh, this angular momentum has a lot of important applications in classical mechanics that is this angular momentum is used to analyze the motion of rigid bodies. Okay. What is the meaning of the fixed axis rotation? I will give an example. There is a, the axle of a car wheel. There is a car wheel. When this car moves around this direction, its wheel will rotate along this direction. Okay. And this is the axis of the rotation of this wheel. The direction of the axis of rotation is along the same line. That is, here this axis rotated along this direction in the closed direction. Okay, we can take this axis is as a z direction, z direction, and when the car moves along this this direction the axle itself may translate that is while rotating this axis along this direction this axle itself is translating or we can say when the car moves straight along this direction on the same direction the axle translates okay that is uh, the direction that i can generally take along this also if the wheel is rotated like this then the axis of rotation is along this direction that direction we take as a z throughout our discussion fine that is we choose the ax the axis of rotation is z direction fine uh, here we discuss motion or the rotation of the object like a wheel. This wheel is a rigid body. The definition of the rigid body is this one. If you apply a certain force on a rigid body, then the separation between the any two particles on the rigid body do not change. Suppose if I consider these are the two points on this rigid body. If I apply a force, therefore this body is started to rotate. Or if I apply a force on this body, therefore the rigid body starts to move along this direction. Then if the distance between the particle do not change, then that body is called a rigid body. Distance between these two particles in that rigid body is always fixed irrespective of the force applied on that body. These bodies are called rigid body. Fine, that is a shape does not change by the application of an extra force. If that keeps in a body, then that body is said to be a rigid body. That is, I will note down here, shape does not change as it rotates, as it translates, etc. You might have studied all these things in the plus one class. If you consider a rigid body, that rigid body consists of a large number of particles. This made up of a large number of atoms. And when this rigid body start to rotate in the clockwise or anti-clockwise direction, every particle in the rigid body remains at a fixed distance from the axis. If this is the axis of the rotation okay suppose you mark two particle in the rigid body as one and two and if this is axis of the rotation and before starting the rotation this is the distance and when the rotation started then the distance from the fixed axis does not change in the case of the rigid body. Okay, these two particles 
the second particle will be always at the same distance when the particle reaches here during the rotation the distance never change that is a rigid body consists of larger number of particles and when a rigid body rotates every particle in the rigid body remains at a distance from the axis actually this is a fixed distance remains at a fixed distance that is very important okay now let us consider the rotation of a rigid body as i mentioned a rigid body consists of a large number of particles now let us consider one particle that is rotating about a particular axis z in the figure it is vj is the velocity of that particle and this rho that is a perpendicular distance from the particle to the axis of rotation okay this rho is a perpendicular distance to the axis of rotation fine that is if r j is a position vector to that jth particle whose mass is m then this velocity can be written as the time derivative of this position vector r j that is v j can be written as r j dot you know that velocity we can also be written as r omega if omega is the angular frequency of the rotation fine that is a, a relation connecting the linear velocity radius of the path the angular frequency omega this this distance is a perpendicular distance actually this r here we can write this velocity as a velocity of the j part j the particle and this r is a perpendicular distance from the axis of rotation to the particle therefore i will write this is a rho j and omega i will copy the same here vj is is equal to r dot j this r dot j can be further written as a rho j omega this rho j is a perpendicular distance to the axis of rotation actually one can write this rho j as root of x j square plus y j square because this is a perpendicular distance if you look at the picture uh, this rho j is a perpendicular distance to the particle that is a hypotenuse actually one can write this as root of x square plus y square fine now the angular momentum of the jth particle of the body okay the angular momentum of this single particle that is the jth particle we know that expression for the angular momentum of a single particle is l is equal to r cross p one can write this is a r cross instead of one can write this is a m into v in the similar way here we can write the angular moment of the jth particle like lj is equal to rj cross mj into vj actually this vj that is the velocity of the particle in this picture that lies in the xy plane fine therefore this l that is a momentum that is the is whose direction will be along the z axis 
means if you take the rj cross v then that will be around the z axis that we have already discussed the direction of angular momentum in the previous classes therefore we can write here direction of l is around z axis fine now here i am going to find a substitution for this vj that is vj if you see here the vj is nothing but rho j omega okay. that is this vj is replaced by rho j and omega therefore lj can be written as uh, this rj one more thing i would like to emphasize here this rj is the perpendicular distance to the particle from the axis of rotation this rj if i write here rj perpendicular mvj actually this is mj rj perpendicular mj vj because i already mentioned the angular moment is around the z axis this in the next steps i will replace this rj perpendicular it is nothing but rho j rho j mj vj and here i will substitute this value vj is equal to rho j omega fine or i can write this the angular momentum of particle i will rewrite this this is a lz direction is around z direction okay lz j is equal to m rho j square omega now the total angular momentum of the body because uh, this is the angular of a single particle positioned at j okay now if you consider the rotation of a disc rotation of a wheel that wheel consists of a large number of particles this j can from 1 to infinity okay then to find out the moment of inertia or to find out the total angular momentum here for this body, we have considered the angular momentum of jth particle only. Lot of such kind of particles are there in this body. Okay. And this rho j is a perpendicular distance to that particular mass or particular particle. And to find out the angular momentum of the whole body, we have to the summation on all the particles. That is total angular momentum of the body we can write that is direction is still the same z direction e is equal to j summation should run from j is equal to 1 to infinity 1 to n if there are n number of particle and lzj that is we have added the angular momentum of each particle in that body that is j instead of lz you can substitute this value that is mj rho j square omega here this omega if take outside or if i consider because the summation runs on this mj and the rho j then this quantity that is summation over j m j rho j square let me write here the quantity m j rho j square that is called a moment of inertia of the body that is denoted by capital i if this is re re replaced by i 
then our LZ can be written as I omega. This is omega, this is I. Where you can write this I is nothing but J MJ rho j square. There is a moment of inertia that depends not only on the mass but also on the location of the axis of rotation and how the mass is distributed, where the mass is distributed and at what distance from the axis of the rotation that mass is distributed. That is denoted by rho j. That is uh, this i should be noted here. Fine, that the moment of i depends on the distribution of mass in the body and location of the axis of rotation. Find now we focus on this moment of inertia that is I can write some summation over j mj rho j square that we can rewrite as a in common rho square mj is a small mass we can say differential mass that when we convert the summation to integration that mj can be written as dm this dm is nothing but differential mass element fine in general we can write this is a i is equal to sum over some uh, integration rho square dm okay uh, now how we can define this moment of inertia moment of inertia can be defined in two ways first one is it is um, ability of a body to continue in its state of rotation or this can also be defined as the inability of a body to produce any change in its state of rotation to get the concept of the moment of inertia I will tell you some example that if you have two bodies and this is a, oh, this is a ball or this is a let us say this is a wheel a and another wheel b oh, both have given the same force same push so that they are started to move started to rotate on the surface both surfaces are the same identical surface then it is found that the body b came to rest very quickly and the body a came to rest after traveling little more distance then we could say that the body which has a tendency to continue in state of motion the state of rotation that was larger for the a that's why that is a little bit uh, far away compared to the body b therefore the body a has a large amount of inertia and the body B suddenly came to the rest and the tendency to continue state of motion is, is very less very small for the body B therefore its moment of inertia is smaller therefore one can conclude that moment of inertia of the body is A is larger moment of inertia of body is B is smaller here next our attempt is how to quantify how to measure the moment of inertia of some simple objects that is our next topic moment of inertia of some simple objects okay first uh, here we will discuss the moment of inertia of uniform thin hoop hoop means like a a ring 
Okay, I will show you the picture. Like a ring. Uh, this is the axis of the rotation. And the ring has a total mass m. That is total hope of mass m and radius r. And the axis of rotation is through the center and perpendicular to the plane of the hoop. This is the plane of the hoop and perpendicular to this plane that you see the axis of the rotation. Fine. Now we have to calculate what is the moment of inertia of this circular ring or circular loop. I think in the plus two, plus one class, you have studied moment of inertia of a ring. You know the expression for the moment of inertia of the ring, that is of that will result. But you did not derive that expression in the plus one class. And today we are going to derive what is the expression for the moment of inertia of the ring. For this, we have the tool that the moment of inertia is equal to integration rho square d where uh, rho is the perpendicular distance to the axis of the rotation perpendicular distance means perpendicular distance to the mass from the axis of the rotation fine another thing uh, this is a uniform thin hoop uniform thin ring that is the mass distribution is uniform therefore the lambda is the mass per unit length that is the linear mass density we can write mass per unit length because this body is having uniform mass density fine next with this information we can go ahead for the derivation of the moment of inertia and uh, here rho i mentioned is a perpendicular distance to the axis of the rotation find that perpendicular distance to this mass is already if you see the picture that is this r is that perpendicular distance from the axis that is a radius of the ring fine therefore this i can be written as r square dm now we have to see what is a dm differential mass element we, I mentioned that lambda is a mass per unit length. Then this lambda can be written as dm by if you take a very small thickness ds, small length ds of the ring, that is this distance, this length is dl, or we can say ds. Mass per unit length is ds. From this one can write dm is equal to lambda ds. If lambda is a mass per unit length, therefore I further I can write this is a if m is a total mass, total length of the ring that is the circumference or the perimeter that is 2 pi r. Therefore I can replace lambda by m by 2 pi r. Therefore, dm can be written as instead of lambda you can write m by 2 pi r into ds if you write this is equation number 1 and this is equation number 2 you can substitute or you can replace this dm by the equation 2 therefore i is equal to r square instead of m write m by 2 pi r ds here you see that uh, the integration from where to where we have to do there is a integration over ds that is the length this is small length element total length of the string is of the ring is 0 to 2 pi r 
now we can write take the constant outside this r and this r got cancelled this is this becomes m r divided by 2 pi now or this m r divided by 2 pi just to do the integration that it will leads to you 2 pi r m r divided by 2 pi r uh, actually there is no r in the denominator into 2 pi r 2 pi 2 pi would cancel finally the moment of inertia of the ring or the moment of inertia of the hoop that is equal to m r square fine now if you keep a large number of hoop together like this okay then uh, like actually you will get a hollow cylinder cylinder like this if you keep a large number of ring together like this you will get a hollow cylinder therefore this hollow cylinder has the moment of inertia same as of, same as that of the ring therefore moment of inertia of the hollow cylinder that has the same expression as that of the ring that is equal to m r square okay uh, please keep this in your mind next we will talk about what is the moment of inertia of a uniform disk that is the second case you all of you might have seen you discuss throw this is a disk and this is the axis of the rotation mass radius of the disk is r and its total mass is m i will show you a good picture uh, this is a, a picture and it is given that this is a uniform disk having total mass m and radius is r and axis of rotation that axis is passing through the center and perpendicular to the plane of the disk if this is the case we have to calculate what is the moment of inertia about this axis fine now uh, we can say that this disk is made up of large number of concentric hoops like this and whose radii ranging from the center to the maximum radius r that is 0 to r fine that is here you can see that uh, in this picture uh, there is a one ring and like this a lot of rings are there and uh, the disk is made up of large number of such a concentric ring of radii ranging from 0 to r here 0 here r fine that is let me note down here fine now consider one such a ring like this one with the radius rho and width d rho then the moment of inertia of the disk that is if uh, di is the moment of inertia of this small ring then to get the moment of inertia of the 
this big disk we assume that this big disk is made up of large number of this concentric ring then just we have to integrate the moment of inertia of this small ring from 0 to total radius r okay and uh, this uh, ring has a moment of inertia and uh, moment of inertia di then the moment of inertia disk can be as i is equal to integration di fine now what is this di this di this di is equal to we know that di is equal to rho square dm and what is this dm dm is a small mass or differential mass or the mass of the small ring small hoop or small ring differential mass we already mentioned that these objects have uniform mass density therefore uh, we can write the mass density mass per unit area is equal to if m is a total mass i is the area mass density will be same now d one can write m by a into da and or what is this da this da is the area of this small ring that is uh, look at this picture this is this is the area of this small ring what is this area that is this area we can write da that is is equal to 2 pi r here r is nothing but a rho radius into its thickness that is 2 pi r dr similar way area is 2 pi rho dr therefore this is a 2 pi rho dr this da can be replaced by 2 pi rho dr fine uh, similar like uh, 2 pi r dr now if i uh, rewrite this dm this dm is equal to m by and one more thing this a a is the total area of the disk then we will as pi r square therefore i can replace this a by pi r square and this da by 2 pi rho d rho fine if you substitute all these values to this expression that is you substitute back this dm to this expression therefore you can write your i is equal integration from where to where we will integrate 0 to capital R instead of di you can substitute rho square instead of dm you can substitute m divided by pi r square 2 pi rho d rho here the pi pi would cancel next uh, you have this 2 m rho cube d rho divided by r square 0 to capital r you can constant the time outside 2 m divided by r square 0 to r rho cube d rho just integrate with the d rho 2m divided by r square into r raised to 4 divided by 4 
limit z to capital R that is 2m divided by 4 r square I took this 4 here then r raised to 4 now cancel out r square this is a r square this is 2 this is 2 that is m r square divided by 2 this is a final result that is the moment of inertia of the disk is equal to pm r square by 2 fine then here if you keep a large number of disks together like this one what will happen you will get a solid disk sorry solid cylinder that is keep a large number of disk together you will get solid cylinder this is solid cylinder if it rotates this direction this is axis of rotation then the moment of inertia of the solid disk will be the same m r square by 2 okay therefore disk and solid cylinder both have the same expression for the moment of inertia and you can draw uh, this solid cylinder like this one and this is uh, axis of the rotation and is mass so that is r was when the finish is a mass curve by 2 the third example the third object that is a moment of finish of a uniform thin stick or rod stick and rod both are the same Let me, uh, here we consider the two cases. Actually, the first case is uh, the axis passes through the midpoint and perpendicular to the stick. This is a stick or the rod and uh, the axis is passing through the center that is a midpoint. And a perpendicular to the stick. In the second case, we will discuss the axis passing through the corner. It is rotating like this. Here, the rotation is about this axis. Fine. It is given that M is the mass of the stick and L is the length of the stick total length is L and we consider a small mass element that is we can say uh, uh, whose length is dx and this long stick is made up of using a small sticks having mass or length sorry length dx whose mass is dm therefore the moment of inertia we can use this expression rho square dm general equation now we need to replace this dm and also this rho what is this rho this rho is nothing but a distance actually distance distance means distance to the mass from the axis of rotation now what is the distance here here the dm mass that is this dm mass that is such a distance x from the axis of the rotation therefore rho square is replaced here by 
yes what about this dm dm is we know that mass per unit length if l is a total length that is equal to the dm by dx this object has uniform mass density m by l is equal to dm by dx or we can say dm is equal to capital m by l into dx now just replace this dm by this expression therefore this is uh, instead of rho square you can substitute x square and instead of dm substitute m by l dx what about the integration limit we are integrating this object from minus l by 2 to plus l by 2 minus l by 2 to plus l by 2 that is you can take here thus m by l outside minus l by 2 to plus l by 2 x square dx that is equal to m by l just to do the integration a square dx means x cube by 3 upper limit plus l by 2 lower limit minus l by 2 if you do this one this will be m by 3l i took 3 outside the if you substitute l by 2 to the x cube l cube by 8 minus then minus l by 2 whole cube that is plus l cube by 8 that is m divided by 3l into 2 times l cube by h 2 and 8 would cancel 2 by 4 then this will be m by 12 this l and l cube could cancel l square m l square by 12 this is the moment of inertia of a stick and the axis is passing through the center passing through the middle and perpendicular to the stick fine the stick is also called a moment uh, road thin uniform road. now let us go to the second case the second case is moment of inertia about an axis passing through the one end and perpendicular to the stick here this has to be pointed out same uniform thin stick but the axis of rotation is the axis is passing through at one end and perpendicular to the stick that is this is the axis of the rotation if the stick rotates like this or if the rod rotates like this what will be the moment of inertia Okay, that is our calculation. For this, I consider a small stick mass element whose mass is dm and its length is dx. It is at a distance x from the axis of operation. The expression for the moment of inertia that is already we have written in terms of the mass and x that is this rho square dm that we have written in this term instead of x and dx that is i can write this rho square dm can be written as m by l i took outside and zero to l next we have here the x square and m by l dx m by l already took outside this for x square dx why the limit please care for that is 0 to l because here this is a 0 and this is the maximum length l fine m 
by L x cube 0 to L. This is equal to m divided by L L cube by 3. Here 1 by 3 will also be there. Sorry. The moment of inertia one can easily write m L cube divided by 3. This is the moment of inertia of the rig, uh, stick or the ring about an axis that is passing through the one end. Okay, fine. Next, the fourth example that I will not do here that you have to do from your side that is do it as a homework. Find moment of inertia of a uniform solid sphere about its diameter. You know that if this is a solid sphere then for a solid sphere it is not a sphere. This is a solid sphere and uh, its moment of inertia about an axis. This axis passes through the center of mass point and along the diameter of the sphere. The final expression everybody knows that is I is equal to 2 by 5 m r square. Okay, this is the moment of inertia about a solid sphere. Fine. Now let us summarize what you have derived so far and i will tell you i will tell you a trick to remember the this uh, equations of the moment of inertia of different objects okay that is the study. because remember in this equation is quite important the competitive examination point of view and before going to the explanation uh, we should keep these things in your own mind that is we will take the expression m square for spherical object spherical or circular object and we will use the term m l square for lengthy object or we can say linear object object having length and the equation that we have derived for the moment of inertia that is about uh, the an axis that is passing through the center of mass that axis is we call it as natural axis that is moment of inertia about natural axis natural axis means this is an axis passing through the center of mass center of mass point and perpendicular to the plane of rotation fine now first consider the object uh, ring we have used the word who for the other side. you know that a ring ring of this type it is rotates along this direction this is the natural axis passing through the center of mass point of the ring and perpendicular to the plane of the ring and its moment of inertia we have derived we know that here this is a circular shape object m r square and the second one you keep this remember this equation as it is and you keep a large number of ring together we will get a hollow cylinder we already mentioned fine that is the second one is our hollow cylinder fine this hollow cylinder has the same expression 
as that of the ring therefore i is equal to m r square and the picture you know that picture rotate along this direction m is the mass of the ring mass of the cylinder and r is the radius next the second object third one that is disk how to remember the equation of the disk this is the picture of the disk okay this is the axis of the rotation and uh, to remember whether it is a mr square or a mr square by 2 or 2 by 3 square the best thing is disk means you remember in this way divide by smallest number divide by smallest number what is the smallest number everybody know that is one not that one take two divide the m r square term by the smallest number that is two that is the moment of inertia of the disk next if you keep large number of disks together what you will get you will get solid cylinder that is the third fourth item how you get keep large number of large number of disks together you will get solid cylinder that is keep like this then that will be the disc or one can easily draw the picture like this this is axis of rotation and the expression is same i is equal to m r square by 2 next the fifth one is I would like to mention spherical shell actually we did not derive the expression for the spherical shell however, however this will be quite useful for your competitive examination how we can remember the expression for the moment of inertia of spherical shell just to concentrate on this thing shell take the term shell it is s if you take the mirror image of s that is like 2 and take the mirror image of e that is like looks like 3 now what do you have to do spherical shell have the spherical shape therefore moment of inertia you can write mr square time will be there in the numerator and here you have the 2 divided by this that is 2 by 3 mr square is the moment of inertia of the spherical shell okay now the sixth one rock or stick here we have the two cases one axis passing through center okay that is the picture will be of this kind this is a rod or the stick and its total length is l but the axis is passing through the center and this object rotate this direction the rod what we can do i can write as r this is a lengthy object and whose mass is m in the moment of finish expression term m l square should be there now this axis is just cutting the object at the middle therefore we have to cut our r like this we have to cut r in the middle passing through the center the axis perpendicular to the stick 
cut r like this then one can write this is a 1 and this looks like a 2 one side of the r is looks like 1 other side of the r looks like a 2 that is 1 2 therefore this will be m l square divided by 12 if the axis is cutting exactly the middle of the stick fine the second case axis passing through edge passing through the edge edge of the stick or let's just say corner instead of the center if the axis is passing through the like this system is rotating learn this direction this is the total length l and mass m uh, earlier we have got our r at the middle where we obtained 1 and 2 you just add these 1 and 2 you will get 3 and in the expression for the moment of inertia m l square there in the numerator the denominator you can just divide by 3 okay this is the moment of inertia of the stick if one the if the axis of the rotation that passes through the one edge and these are the simple ways to remember this equation without much effort the last object seventh one sphere sphere means solid sphere in the solid sphere that is a uh, axis passes to the center of mass center of mass point and along its diameter here how we can remember the expression sphere has a spherical shape that is m r square should be there at what its coefficient to remember that one just to you write sphere in the sphere you have the s that is your mirror image is like this one two next you have p the p stands for punch in hindi five punch five okay that is the coefficient now you can write two by five and the moment of inertia you can write 2 by 5 m r square this is the moment of inertia of the sphere if you draw the picture of the sphere definitely its axis pass through the center of mass point and along the diameter also rotation is along this direction if it is a sphere take s and p take the mirror image of s that is 2 P stands for the punch 2 by 5 m r square okay these are the some simple techniques to remember the equations of or the formulas of the moment of inertia a different object and uh, please practice it and please remember these formulas next we will discuss the parallel axis theorem thank you very much